Welcome. My name is Margarita Blanco. I'm a nurse consultant with Lanterman Regional Center. This is module number three, the third and final video of the series titled What You Need to Know About COVID-19 Vaccination. In this final module, we will, we will prepare you for what you need to expect or what you need to know before, during, and after the day of your vaccine appointment. Before we get started, I'm going to review this disclaimer that this presentation is for informational purposes only. This presentation is not to provide medical advice and should not be substituted for seeking medical advice from your healthcare provider. The information shared today is intended to help you make a well-informed decision and or prepare for a more detailed conversation about COVID-19 vaccines with your healthcare provider. The information shared today related to COVID-19 illness, COVID-19 vaccine information, vaccine eligibility, vaccine appointment information is current as of March 31st, 2021, but is subject to change. Please continue to frequently check the CDC website, your local and state public health department websites for changes, updates, and guidance about COVID-19 illness and COVID-19 vaccines. So up until this point, um, if you have watched the other modules, number one and two, um, the boxes that are checked off here are the things that we have covered. If you have not had a chance to watch those videos, um, when you have a chance, I recommend that you go back and you watch them. Um, so this is a review of what we have covered in those past modules. Um, in module number one, we learned important information about all three vaccines that are currently authorized under emergency use in the United States. Um, that was the Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson vaccine that we covered. We discussed information about who should receive, um, side effect information, and then other considerations for people that have allergies, um, people that have prior history of allergies to injections, um, or other vaccines, and then other considerations such as people that have had COVID before, have particular medical conditions or other treatments um, or diagnostic testing that's coming up. Um, you need to talk to your doctor before um, receiving a vaccine so that you get some guidance on which vaccine may be recommended for you in particular, um, or the timing of when you should schedule your appointment. Um, and like I said, in module number one, we also covered and learned about um, side effects. So it's very important that you know what to expect, what's normal, um, and then also what is un unexpected or what is considered a severe side effect um, or an emergency so that you can react quickly and report that and get help. Um, we also shared information about um, two different uh, programs where you can report side effects um, or um, severe unexpected effects. And so there is a voluntary program uh, that you can sign up for with your smartphone. It's the VSAFE program, so you can report directly to the CDC um, after your vaccine, how you're feeling. Um, and so I shared that information in module one. I also shared information about the VAERS program. That's an online system that most healthcare providers and vaccine providers are required to report side effect um, severe reactions on. Um, but the public, you as a vaccine recipient, if you experience any severe side effects or unexpected events, you can report on that system as well. Um, in module number two, we went over the eligibility criteria. Um, our regional center clients ages 16 to 64, they are now all eligible as of March 15. Um, due to um, their high risk um, related to a chronic medical condition um, or simply because of an intellectual or a developmental disability. Also, we discussed our parent and family caregivers um, that they're eligible to receive the vaccine under the healthcare worker group. Um, in module two, we also kind of navigated our way um, and I explain to you how you could search and find appointments. I shared um, the information that you would need to book an appointment. Um, I also discussed the different 
um, documentation that will be needed. You'll need to present the day of your appointment. So you'll need to bring proof of your eligibility group. So that letter from the regional center that got sent out to you, if you haven't received it yet, it should arrive shortly for clients ages 16 to 64. The parent or um, family caregivers, you should have received the letter in February. If you have not received the letter, um, please contact your service coordinator or the Family Resource Center for uh, further assistance on that. Um, and then I also shared information about um, the transportation resources that may be available to you. It's also really important that you know how to get to your appointment it's, if it's the first time you're going there. Very important that when you book an appointment um, that you make sure you know it's a walk up or a drive through site and you have the appropriate transportation arranged. Um, and so really important, just wanted to cover here over the eligibility uh, documentation you need to present. Bring a photo ID. It does not have to be government issued. It just has to be something with your picture and your full name, um, proof of your eligibility group. And like I said, that would be your regional center letter um, or some sort of ID if you meet the other eligible groups. Um, and proof that you're a resident of LA County. And that could be on your letter, that could be on your ID. Um, but if you need to bring some other proof, um, it could be correspondence, a utility bill, a phone bill, something like that. Um, and also before your appointment, it's also very, very important that um, you stay healthy, eat well, get plenty of rest the night before, stay hydrated, um, and stay relaxed and calm. Um, you know, too much stress and anxiety um, that could take a toll on your immune system as well. So very important to stay calm, relax, um, you know, share your concerns, your fears about the vaccine, talk to people, um, talk to your doctor, ask questions, make sure that all your concerns are addressed. Um, speak to your family and friends or your service coordinator if you need additional support, someone to go with you uh, for that appointment. And then um, please make sure to read um, the vaccine fact sheets ahead of time so you know um, specific information related to the vaccine that you're going to receive. Um, I did share that information in module one, um, the EUA fact sheet. You can also um, search online on the CDC website, print it out and read it for the specific vaccine um, that you will receive. Um, another thing is that we do not recommend that you take Tylenol or Advil or ibuprofen um, before your appointment. Some people, um, they're a little scared, so they want to take something so they won't feel uh, side effects, but um, it's not recommended because it may actually alter um, the effectiveness of the vaccine. So you're going to want to wait, just wait till your appointment and then see how your symptoms are afterwards. If you need something, then you take what's um, most appropriate for you, but it's not recommended you pre-medicate or you take it before um, your vaccine. And then the day of your appointment, um, it's just very important that you know um, that you and anyone that accompanies you um, as a support staff or support person, they must wear a mask to the vaccination site. Um, it's also important you wear comfortable clothing, preferably a short sleeve shirt, something where it's just easy to access your arm. So if it's cold that day, wear a short sleeve shirt under your jacket or your sweater, um, but you don't wanna spend a whole lot of time there trying to remove layers of clothing so that they can access your arm. You wanna make it as easy as possible. Um, and then make sure that, like I said, you bring all that documentation with you, your proof of eligibility group, your photo ID, um, and a proof that you're a resident um, of LA County. Um, and then just remember some places may ask you to bring your insurance card. Um, if you have insurance, bring it with you. Um, insurance is not a requirement. It's just for reimbursement purposes. The vaccine is free regardless of your immigration status or whether or not you have insurance. So if you have it available, bring it. If not, um, you just let the um, vaccine provider know you do not have any insurance. Um, and then you wanna make sure that you get there a little bit early, you know how to find the place. Um, again, you know, you have transportation um, scheduled or planned that's already been arranged. Um, 
And then uh, if it's a drive-through site, you want, may wanna give yourself a little bit more time. It might be a little bit more unpredictable what the wait times are at those places, but you should arrive early. Um, there will be some time required once you get there for checking in, they'll do, they'll check your temperature, they'll ask you questions like a health screening, how you're feeling that day, are you sick, or do you have any signs and symptoms of COVID, then you'll answer a healthcare kind of questionnaire, allergy questionnaire, um, and then they'll just, you know, they need to screen whether you're okay to receive the vaccine that day. Um, so once you check in, you also show them your eligibility documents that you meet um, the uh, eligibility group um, criteria and that you can show proof of your identity through your ID and that you live in LA County. And then most of these places are set up in stations. So, you know, you check in at one station and then they'll have you move to another area. So then once you're checked in, you head over to um, the area where they'll administer your vaccine. Um, and what you'll do there is um, if it's a walk-up site, you'll just sit down and you'll relax. Um, if it's a drive-through site, they may have you drive and park over to another area. And then they'll ask you for your name and your date of birth just to confirm your identity. Um, and then if you are afraid of needles, look the other way. If someone is there with you, have them distract you um, and support you through the process. But before you know it, um, everything will be over. Um, you'll feel a quick little pinch or a prick in your arm, um, or you may feel nothing at all. Um, and then you're done. Um, and then they will have you move to another area where, where they will um, monitor you for another 15 minutes. They have staff around that will be kind of checking to see how people are doing, make sure no one has any immediate reactions. Um, and it's usually like a little waiting area where chairs are set up six feet apart. Um, if you're in your car at a drive through site, um, they may have you rem remain where you are or move over to another area and park your car and wait um, the 15 minutes. Um, they will hand you a little white card. Um, that's going to be your COVID-19 vaccination record card. It will have your name, your date of birth, um, the date you received your vaccine, um, the first dose, and then the name of the vaccine. Um, when you return, you'll need to bring that white card so they can document your second dose if you need a second dose. Um, and then depending on what place you receive it, if it's at your own um, medical provider's office or clinic, um, it may also have your medical record on there as well. So it's important that you um, keep this card stored safely and protect it because it does have your personal information. Um, so then after your 15 minutes or uh, for individuals, if you have a, a prior history or reason they need to observe you more closely for any immediate side effects or reactions, they'll keep you there for actually 30 minutes. They'll observe you a little bit longer. Um, but once your time is up, you're ready to leave. Um, but very, very important before you leave, you do get that white card um, with your vaccination record um, on there and then um, that you get instructions for how you will receive your second dose if you need to get a second dose of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. Um, so they should either give you an appointment or give you instructions. Is, it gonna, is your appointment gonna come via an email or a text message? They should give you instructions or information about how you're gonna get that second dose. Um, every place that gives you your first dose should guarantee you a second dose. Um, so please don't leave the vaccination site um, without that information. Um, and then it's very important you continue to use all the same protective measures um, we've been doing over, the, you know, the last year, wearing your mask, you know, keeping your physical distance, um, avoiding crowded places, washing your hands, so on and so forth. Um, and then you're, you're going to go home. You're going to monitor your symptoms. You want to hydrate, rest. You can resume your, your routine, normal activities, depending on how you're feeling. Um, you just don't want to do anything too stressful or too strenuous. Um, and then just, like I said, important you stay hydrated, eat well, you rest if you need to rest, um, and follow the, the protective measures. This is what your um, COVID-19 vaccination record card will look like. So they'll document here the name of the vaccine, the lot number, 
um, and then the date it was given and then where you received it. When you go back, they will fill out this information. Um, and like I said, it has your name, your date of birth. It may have your medical record number as well. So you wanna keep this information um, safe and um, make sure you get a card when you leave. Um, so afterwards, you're, like I said, you're gonna go home, monitor your symptoms. Um, you wanna make sure that um, you review again that um, EUA, the vaccine fact sheet. Um, that gives you specific details about the vaccine that you received, the known side effects, things that you can expect with the vaccination. Um, if you didn't, if you don't have that, you can always search for it online. You can go to the CDC website. I did share the links in module number one. Um, and then again, if you want to register for vSafe, you can do that. Um, or if you need to report any um, side effects, um, it's important that you know what to expect and what um, is unexpected. Um, typically, um, people will experience side effects within the first 24 hours. They may last anywhere from 24 hours, um, but they usually tend to subside, subside after a day um, or two, three days after the vaccine. The symptoms are less. Um, for the most part, everyone can expect to have some side effects, and at least you're going to have a sore arm, a little bit of stiffness in your arm that same night. So you want to make sure that you use your arm as much as possible and do some um, exercises, move it around, um, just so that it doesn't get so sore or stiff. Um, if you do have pain or swelling at the injection site where you received your vaccine, um, you can apply a cold compress or some ice for comfort. Um, if it's still painful or you have a lot of aches and pains, um, and you can't tolerate it, then you can consider taking um, something over the counter for pain. Um, if you have fever, same thing, you can consider, um, you know, doing cold compresses. If that doesn't help get your fever down, uh, you're still uncomfortable. You know, you also take uh, some sort of fever reducer, Tylenol, ibuprofen, whatever is most appropriate for you. Um, if the symptoms don't improve, um, or subside, like so over the course of one to three days, they don't improve and you're worried or they continue to bother you, call your doctor, um, report what you're feeling to your doctor. Um, but really important to note that if you think you're having an emergency, an immediate side effect, anything uh, unusual that's happening to you within the first um, four hours of receiving the vaccine, um, and it may be life-threatening, you want to call 911 um, or get to the nearest emergency room, especially if you're experiencing some sort of generalized body rash, swelling of your face, tongue, throat, or mouth, you're having difficulty breathing, or you've got multiple body systems that are involved and you're just not well, um, you're going to want to call uh, your doctor or you're going to call 911 if it's life-threatening. Um, and then you're going to continue to use all the same measures to protect yourself. Remember that no vaccine is 100%. Um, full protection for the vaccine is considered two weeks after your second dose of one of the Pfizer Moderna vaccines or two weeks after the one dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. It is important to note that you can get COVID um, after your first dose of getting the vaccine. Um, and so um, it's important that um, you have waited the isolation period before you get that second dose. So at minimum, um, if you end up getting sick and testing positive for COVID, um, you need to wait at least 10 days um, since you tested positive, and that's if you've had no symptoms. Um, but also, if you do develop symptoms, you have to wait at least 10 days, make sure that your symptoms are overall improved and you've had no fever for 24 hours. Um, if for any reason you need to um, postpone or reschedule that second dose of vaccine, if you're due for another dose of a Pfizer or a Moderna vaccine, if for whatever reason you need to postpone, either because you got COVID or something else came up, it's really important that you try to reschedule that as close as possible to the, the time frame it was due. So 
For Pfizer, a second dose is due within three weeks. For Moderna, a second dose is due within four weeks. The latest you should go um, with either one of those is six weeks since your first dose. So um, try to get that scheduled, rescheduled as soon as possible. Um, and then the other thing too to keep in mind, it all depends on the severity of your COVID um, illness and what treatment you received. Um, you need to discuss that with your doctor because some things may um, change uh, the waiting period. You may have to actually wait 90 days depending on um, certain treatments or things that um, you receive. So everybody's situation is different. So it's always important that you consult with your doctor about that. But in general, if you need to postpone that second dose vaccination, six weeks is the latest um, you should go after that. We, we don't know that you'll have the same um, protection or efficacy of the vaccines. Um, so important to note for the return of that second dose, um, pretty much the precautions are gonna be the same as the first one. Um, you wanna wear comfortable clothing, bring all your eligibility documents, show up on time. Um, afterwards, you're gonna wanna monitor for the side effects keep that card, uh, that white vaccination card um, stored safely. Um, if your symptoms don't improve or they're worrisome after one to three days, call your doctor. If you don't have access to a doctor, um, you don't have insurance, so you don't have a regular doctor, you can always call 211, um, the LA County resource line, and let them know that um, you need to get some medical advice related to um, a vaccine that you received, and they'll help you find a healthcare provider. Um, everyone else should follow up with their physician if they're having um, side effects that are worrisome um, or that don't improve. If it's a medical emergency, call 911 or seek care at your nearest emergency room. Um, you know, if you can plan ahead, sometimes it's best to schedule your vaccine appointments um, the day before you have a day off so that just in case you don't feel well, you can rest or you have some flexibility in your day. So if, if you're able to do that, um, that, that would be something to consider. Um, and uh, the other thing is um, you're going to continue to follow the uh, recommended precautions. Remember, full vaccination isn't two weeks until after your second dose. Um, or two weeks after that one dose of the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Um, and then protect yourself, your friends, your family, your coworkers. Um, you know, now we have this new tool in our toolkit in addition to all the precautions we've been following over the last year. Um, choose to get vaccinated when it's offered to you, unless you have any medical conditions um, treatments or allergies, things that you need to consult with your doctor, um, then you get the vaccine that's available to you. Um, participate in Be Safe. Um, you can voluntarily report your own uh, symptoms to the CDC um, after you receive your vaccination. So in addition to getting a vaccine, um, this is another way that you can do your part to help um, with the pandemic. Um, share your experience with your, your friends, your coworkers, your family. Um, you've been through the, the vaccine experience now. So help other family members or friends answer their questions, share with them the basic information you know or what you've learned about the COVID-19 vaccines. Um, and you can be a role model, share your vaccine pictures on social media with your family and friends. Just be very careful, like I said, with that personal information that's on the front of the card. If you post any pictures, just make sure that um, that information isn't, people aren't able to read it. You don't wanna become a, a victim of identity fraud. But um, so I do hope that um, I have answered some of the questions and concerns that you have had um, through the course of this um, COVID-19 vaccine training series. Um, I hope that now you can make a more informed choice or decision as to whether or not you want to get vaccinated. 
um, when we get the majority of people vaccinated, hopefully we can go back to returning soon to some of the things that we miss so much and, and we once enjoyed, like celebrating with family and friends, those special occasions, going out, having fun with our friends and our family. Um, and I just wanted to show here next um, some of our friends um, of the regional center that have gone through vaccination already. Um, we have Joe here um, from the Family Resource Center. Um, and then these are some of our friends from Easter Seals peer-to-peer -peer support group. Um, we have Brian and Crystal. And then we have Jackie here, who is one of our service coordinators. So it looks like they're going through um, the drive-through sites here. Um, and then this was an event that was just held here at Regional Center, a vaccination clinic. Um, with Oxford Health. They were um, the agency that helped administer the vaccines. Um, and then I got vaccinated as well. Um, I went through Kaiser and just, you know, another resource to share is that Kaiser does offer vaccine appointments and you do not need to be a member of Kaiser. Um, you can go to their website. They have a link for people that are members to sign up for a vaccine and then they have a separate link for non-members to sign up for vaccine appointments. Um, so um, there's different ways, different settings um, in which you can find a COVID-19 vaccine appointment. I shared that information with you in module number two. So if you need to get more information or you missed one of the modules, I recommend you go back um, and watch some of the other videos. Um, so thank you for your attention and your time. Um, please stay healthy and be safe. If you need additional information, I have listed here um, the LA County Public Health website. If you go to their COVID-19 uh, vaccine website, um, there's lots of great information there. I shared that in module two, but what I've posted here is um, a page of frequently asked questions. So if you've still got some questions or concerns, I do recommend you go to the LA County um, Public Health Department website, Vaccinate LA County. Um, you'll find lots of great resources there. It's constantly being updated. I've also put the link here for the Department of Developmental Services. They also frequently update their website. Um, here's a link to um, their frequently asked questions about COVID-19 vaccines. Um, and then definitely visit the CDC website um, on COVID-19 vaccines. Lots of great information. Um, it's probably one of the, the sites that is kept up uh, to date most frequently. That's where a lot of our guidance is coming from. So I do recommend um, you check out the CDC websites um, quite often. Um, so hopefully this information um, is helpful to you and through the series of videos um, you received or found the information that you needed to make a well-informed choice. Again, thank you for your time and your attention. Stay healthy and be safe.